Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope that you like the little animation that I made, and here's how I'm gonna make it. So what I'm working on right now is a little test piece from the Ruination Phantom. I'm basically copying everything that I possibly can about it so that I can get a feel for the material, and so that I don't like have to figure these things out while I'm making the gun. And while I'm finishing up this little model, I want to just say that this is the first time that I've really UV unwrapped everything manually and did all of the work manually instead of using like an auto UV unwrap function of Blender or Substance Painter. So this took so much longer than any of my other projects because of that, which I mean, it was fun and relaxing. So yeah, I'm probably going to do that more in the future. <laughs> Anyways, right now you can see that I'm finishing up the stone chisel-y material, and I'm actually pretty happy with how that came out. So now I'm going to move over to the crystal and try to figure out how I'm going to do this, because I haven't actually made any glass material and substance painter yet, so this was kind of a challenge. And you'll see that I actually open up like five or ten tutorials in Google, but like in 4,000 times speed, so that was fun. So as I'm finishing up this material, I'm just trying to figure out where I should put the scratches and the bumps on the model so that it can look even more thematic. And I'm just using the Phantom as a reference because this piece was actually taken from the Phantom. And I'm actually really happy with how this turned out, so I'm going to be importing it into Blender and I'm going to be giving it the parallax effect. But before I do that, of course, I have to look up 50 tutorials to figure out how to <laughs> import the opacity map from Substance to Blender, but eventually I figure it out. So with the opacity map exported into Blender, I could start working on the parallax effect, which I totally just stole from a tutorial, <laughs> which I can link in the description if you're interested. And um, I just have to find a fitting image to put in it. And here's me just kind of trying to figure out how to do that. So I ended up going for this crystally purple background effect that I found, and it actually turned out looking really nice. So I'm actually super happy about this. This was just a little test, and and now I feel confident enough to go into the actual project, so let's do that. And with that done, I'm going to move over to Krita so that I can make my concept art. So I'm just starting out by making all the crystals of the material, and then I'm going to be overlaying those crystals with the stony material. Making this concept art was actually a lot of fun. I've never really done it in this way, and I just used references from every Ruination skin and all their variants, which really, really helped because all of them share so many themes, like the, the little bronze teeth, the Ruination skull, just everything, which I think is really cool. So this concept art actually turned out much better than I thought it would, and uh, yeah, here's the final product. And now I can move back over to Blender where I can put this thing together in three dimensions. So here's a little evolution clip of how I progressed through this. I basically just worked in small chunks around the model and tried to keep in mind every dimension. So you can see that like in the middle things are trying to like wrap around each other and the crystals and everything and the curvature and the little skull thing with the weird teeth <laughs> looks a little funny but I'm actually really happy with how this came out, and yeah, this is basically the finished model, so I'm going to be UV unwrapping all of this manually, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I didn't really know how to do this very well, because this is, again, like one of my first times actually really trying this. I, I knew the basics, but actually doing this just took so long. So like this little clip that you're watching right here was probably around two hours, if I were to guess. I'm, I'm not completely sure. Either way, um, it was pretty relaxing, and I got all of my UV unwraps done. I just cycled through like four materials at a time, and yeah, just put it together very slowly. 
I will say though that this absolutely improved the quality of my model and the materials because auto UV unwrap doesn't have any context about your model. It doesn't know where you actually want seams to go or like what you want seen. So at the end of the day, manual UV unwrapping gives you a ton more control on where seams go and just at the texture quality and everything. So just as I'm finishing up with the UV unwrapping, I want to mention that I do end up making a high poly version of this so that I can and use the normals of it for a, a lot more control and depth on the actual materials. So what you're seeing here is completely processed and everything's finished. I just had to do it off screen because it actually takes a really long time for that to load. So what I'm doing now is basically doing what I did on my test piece, but on a ton of different pieces. Um, I am experimenting still on different ways of putting in the cracks and the crevices and the outlines, but for the most part, that practice piece definitely helped me throughout this process. And I just want to say that if you have any skin suggestions or ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments. I always read them and I will definitely be considering them. That's actually how projects like this one and actually most of them get started so yeah absolutely do that if you want and with that said one of the most common things you guys ask me is to do tutorials so if you want to see tutorials please let me know what kind of tutorials you want to see because I wouldn't classify myself as any sort of master I've only been using blender for around a year now so it would have to be like pretty basic stuff I think I could do some slightly intermediate stuff but yeah definitely let me know in the comments so now i'm going to be figuring out the general composition of the materials with the black stone the bronze teeth and the opacity map for the crystals so that the parallax can shine through and as you can see i'm changing the materials pretty frequently and that's just so i have a better sight on where i'm actually making my opacity map so don't be afraid to like change the properties because you could always change them back at the end so with my opacity map finished, I'm going to be moving over to making the outlines of the crystal. For the outlines, I used a procedural map that found the edges and put an emissive map on them. And now I'm going to be finishing up the base material with some roughness maps, trying to get some ambient occlusion, which is basically just the shadowing on itself. And I'm going to be making the black stone material, which actually came out really good with the chiseling and the blue outline. And now I'm just trying to make the bronze look nice, adding a little bit more texture to the chiseling, outlining. But yeah, at this point, I'm basically just adding the final touches to the model, and I'm very happy with how it came out. And while I'm doing this, I'm still experimenting a lot with what looks nice on the crystals, the height and the emissiveness. I made it a little bit more blue in the end. But yeah, you can see it looks pretty good when in rendering. And I'm just adding some normal effects onto it to give it a little bit more depth. And a normal map, if I were to explain it, would be sort of like faking lighting or faking geometry by using textures. So I'm just going to be doing that all over the model, kind of tweaking the hue of the outline so that it looks better. And I think that this one is basically done. So now I'm going to be exporting it back into Blender so that I can give it the parallax effect and so that I could render it. And I explain a parallax as giving an image artificial depth. So like if you rotate around it, it'll move as if it were a 3D object stuck in a 2D object. And right now I'm basically just taking the initial parallax effect and applying it to all the crystals, just fitting them in there with planes, even the trigger, everything. And this is another weird <laughs> bad attempt at making a background image, but luckily I found one that looked nice enough. And with a little bit of editing, I made it work pretty well in the model. And right now, I'm just getting everything completely finished, finding an HDRI for a background, and now I'm going to be making the other variants. So I'm going to be making the first variant, which is just black and blue. And since I already have a template and the materials already made for the second one, it's going to be actually very simple making the next ones.
So the first variant actually is much rockier than the second one and has a much thinner outline. So those are the main differences. I could basically keep everything else, just hue shift the uh, crystal for each variant. This is the fire one, which has some line work on the gun, which I'm doing right now, giving it a little bit of depth too. Basically just going over it and trying to make it match as best as I can. And yeah, that's the volcano variant. And now I'm moving over to the green one. So this one's actually my favorite because it keeps the bronze and I just think the colors work really well with the model. So now I'm just adding the finishing touches, a little bit of line work on the main body, and that's it. So now I'm gonna take it over to Blender, add all the parallax effects to all of them, and that is it. I want to thank all of you for watching and if you've made it to the end of this video I recommend subscribing because I'm going to be doing a lot more of this content. But yeah that's the finished project. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.